Welcome into Texans today. I'm your host, Jeremy Chuggs, and coming up on today's show, the latest Texans trade rumors, plus some news and notes from the NFL owners meeting, some news around the NFL, some new rules to get into as we get ready for this next season of Texans football. But before we get into any of that, some wee 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 breaking news coming earlier this morning. The Texans, for the first time, are going to be a, me a part of the Hall of Fame game, the very first preseason game for the NFL this season. It's going to be between the Texans and the Bears on August 1st in Canton, Ohio. And why, you say, why are the Texans a me uh, part of the Hall of Fame game this year? It's because the GOAT, number 80, Andre Johnson being inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame, the first Texans player to ever be inducted into the Hall of Fame our guy from the U, it's Andre Johnson, number 80, one of the best receivers to ever play the game. So show him some love. I know Texans fans, I know Texans, I know people in the front office watch these videos. If Andre comes past this video, I just have to say, first of all, thank you for helping all of us Texans fans getting through some of those rough years as this franchise was getting off the ground. You are the sole light for this team for so many years. The reasons why so many people went to games, the reason why there were so many 80s in the, you know, in the fan sections. Everybody's wearing your jersey. Everybody absolutely loves you, Andre. And I just want to show my deepest gratitude for what you did, not for the only for this team, but for the city. Andre Johnson, a real legend. If you agree with me, go down and spam 80 for the GOAT, Andre Johnson. Spam 80, spam AJ, spam Andre Johnson, spam rock and roll Andre Johnson if you want to, but show the man some love, the first Texans player to be inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame in Canton. Shout out to you, Andre. Really, really appreciate everything you've done for this team. Now, on the docket for today, the Texans, could they be trading backup quarterback Davis Mills and the latest coming from NFL owners meetings and this came from the 33rd team on a possible trade for Davis Mills to the Denver Broncos one of those teams in the NFL draft this year they're looking for a new quarterback they obviously released Russell Wilson earlier this offseason he signs with the Pittsburgh Steelers now their number one on their depth chart is Jarrett Stidham well the 33rd team suggested they maybe trade for Davis Mills instead and this is what they had to say the 26-year-old rookie, or the 26-year-old is entering the final year of his rookie contract, and the Denver Broncos are the only team in the league without a somewhat viable passer on the roster. Mills has been a below average but respectable presence in 34 games. He doesn't create high-end plays, but avoids disastrous ones well enough. A conditional selection that maxes out at a fourth-round pick would allow Denver to be somewhat functional even if a rookie doesn't fall into their laps. So this was the trade idea that they kind of threw out there for the Texans and Davis Mills. A 2025 conditional fifth-round pick that I, I guess could turn into a fourth-round pick in 2025 for Davis Mills. So my question to you is, if you were in charge, would you do this trade? Give me a yes, give me a no down in the comment section. Let me know why you would or would not do this trade. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's video. So if an ad break plays, perfect timing. Just go down in the comment section and let me know, would you make this trade? It's a no for me, dog. I wouldn't do this deal. I would only do this deal if the Texans were getting a fourth or fifth, fifth round pick this season because I, I still think Davis Mills is a serviceable backup. And for what the Texans are giving up, I would rather get that asset this year in the draft. We already heard D'Amico Ryans earlier this week said he loves the depth in the middle rounds of this draft. Rounds two through rounds five. So if the Texans can get another selection, possibly get another playmaker for this season, that would mean the world. And it's not like the Broncos don't have the capital to do it this year. They have a first, third, they have a fourth, and then they have three fifth round picks. So if the, even if the Texans get their last fifth round pick at 147, I would rather do that than a conditional fifth going into next season. And the real question is, how much is Mills even worth in a trade? We saw Justin Fields get traded for a six to the Pittsburgh Steelers earlier this offseason. Is Davis Mills worth more than Justin Fields? It's, it's actually interesting. When you look at their stats, here are his career stats, by the way. A lot closer than you'd think between him and Justin Fields. A career average of 62.8 completion percentage, almost 6,000 yards, 35 touchdowns to 25 interceptions. I really do think Davis Mills 
could be worth something. And that's why I'm saying no, because especially if anything happens to C.J. Stroud, I don't necessarily trust Case Keenum to start for this team for multiple games. We saw how he miraculously won against the Titans earlier last season, and then he kind of exploded against the Cleveland Browns the very next week. I think Davis Mills could be a good option as a backup for C.J. Stroud this year. In case anything happens, I would much rather see Mills than Keenum. That's why I'm not doing this deal unless we're getting some draft capital this year. Now, coming up in just a moment, news from the NFL owners meetings, some surprising things and some very, very interesting things going on around your Houston Texans. I'll get into that in just a moment. But I couldn't do today's show if it wasn't for our amazing sponsor, Game Time, the best ticketing app out there. Where are my baseball fans at? This season is set to get underway, and if you're trying to catch a game, the easiest way to score last-second tickets is with our sponsor, Game Time. You can get great deals on last-second tickets and even see your seat view before you buy the tickets. All-in prices show you what you pay without hidden fees or expenses, and Game Time has zone deals. You pick the section, Game Time picks the seats for an average savings of 18%. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets, especially last second tickets. And one of my favorite features of game time, if you can see it right here, it shows you the Astros schedule their home games, but it has those little emojis next to the games, like Yankees Astros right here. There's a little firework emoji. That's firework night at the Astros game. So it shows you the different deals that they have and the different nights that they have at the games. Also, you can look forward into some of the best music concerts that are coming into town. Bad Bunny coming into town. And one of my favorites, I think you should leave Tim Robinson. His show is coming to town as well. So you can check all those shows out. You can check all the Astros games out at game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code chat sports. That's one word, chat sports, C H A T S P O R T S, for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code chat sports for $20 off. Download Game Time today, last minute tickets, lowest price guarantee. Now, let's talk about what went down during the NFL owners' meetings. First off, which I know a lot of Texans fans, some of them were confused because they weren't following this story very closely. Cal McNair named the principal owner of the Houston Texans in a vote that went down at the owners' meeting. And if you don't know the story behind it, it's a real like succession type story. Basically, Cal's younger brother tried to take. Um, his mom to court saying she wasn't mentally comparable enough to control her estate, which just so happily had the Texans in her estate, the ownership of the Houston Texans. So the court struck that down. Cal McNair swiftly said, you know what? I'm not playing any games with my younger brother. He now takes over as the owner of the Houston Texans, which he's been doing all the ownership duties behind the scenes for Janice McNair. But this is just like pen to paper writing. Cal McNair is now the owner of the Houston Texans. His little brother is not going to be able to squeeze his way in and take over ownership of the team. A precautionary measure by Cal McNair, if you've been following the story. I haven't been giving it much daylight because I thought the claims by his little brother were kind of wild and just kind of like a money grab, in my opinion. And I didn't think it meant a lot to this team because I, I didn't think Cal McNair would give up ownership whatsoever of this team. But it's made official now. Cal McNair named principal owner of the Houston Texans. Another thing to come out of the NFL owners meeting was actually another move by the Houston Texans. They went ahead and signed another cornerback in Miles Bryant. He played for the New England Patriots last year. Stats don't look too bad. 77 tackles, one interception, seven pass breakups. The one thing you don't see on there is that he had a completion percentage against him of around 79%. And when I asked our Patriots guy, Nick Roloff, what he thought about Miles Bryant, he told me one word ass he said he's ass so uh maybe he's a depth guy maybe he's another special team special players type of guy but miles bryant added to the roster which kind of shows a little bit of a trend for this houston texans team this offseason signing a lot of young and unproven corners so my question to you is what is your confidence level in this coaching staff getting the most out of unproven players jeff akuda cj henderson now miles bryant at the cornerback spot do the Texans see something that the rest of the league doesn't in getting these kind of guys who have been casted aside as, you know, busts? They're guys that aren't going to work out in the NFL. They're more depth guys. Do you think D'Amico Ryan's his defensive mind is saying, wait, actually, there's a reason why these guys were drafted so high. There's a reason why these guys were highly touted at one point and I can get the best out of them. 
I don't know. I'm somewhere in the middle. I'm about a six or a seven, but let me know what your confidence level is in this coaching staff getting the most out of these unproven guys. Now, another thing that came out of the NFL owner meeting uh, this past week, the NFL or the Texans new jerseys, they're coming in April. We already know that the Texans leaked one of their jersey designs on Reddit earlier this month, these bad boys, but Cal McNair hinted the new jerseys coming in April. Stay tuned is what he said. So we should be getting those new jerseys in the coming weeks before the NFL draft. They have to kind of release it before the NFL draft because they want that, you know, merch output with the hats, with the draft stuff going on, with the new Texans design. So they're going to release it in the next couple weeks. Another reason why you got to stay subscribed, hit your notifications, because whenever those new jerseys come out, we're going to let you know about it. We're going to put it on our community page. We're going to show it on our channels. So that's why you got to hit that sub button to stay informed with the Houston Texans. And maybe the biggest news coming out of the NFL owner meetings this past week were the implementation of some new rules. And the biggest one being something that they're taking away from the XFL, now the UFL, is the new kickoff rules. Here's a good picture that I saw with the new format for the uh, NFL kickoffs. As you see, the kicker is going to be there on the left, and then kind of like that blue section in the middle, that's going to be where the kickoff team is set up five yards away from the kick return team where they're going to be able to have seven players on that front line, two, and then two returners in the back. And there's some new rules that go along with it that I just want to name out really quick. Players can't move until the ball is touched, just like the former XFL UFL rules. Kick out of the back of the end zone is now to the 30-yard line. A kick that hits before the end zone and rolls out is to the 20, so it's really incentivizing kickers not to kick it out of the back of the end zone because the other team will get it at the 30 instead of the 20. A kick out of bounds is to the 40-yard line or the more advantageous spot. And no, like I said, nobody can touch and or nobody can move until the ball is touched or hits the ground. And if the ball hits not past the 25-yard line, then the other team automatically gets it at the 40-yard line. And this is something that the NFL is really trying to get back, which is the kick return specialist. So a lot of people were wondering, why did the Texans re-sign a guy like Steven Sims? Could he be somebody that they're looking to be a return specialist in the NFL now that they have these new rules that are really incentivizing teams to have more kick returns? They want teams to have more action there because that's something that's kind of been lost these past three, four, five seasons in the NFL is the kick return. We haven't seen really many of any of it. You see this a ton, which means end zone, a touchback, going to the 25-yard line. Now they're trying to kind of bring that back so a guy like Steven Sims could be much more valuable to the Texans going into this season. Same with somebody who, very interestingly enough, showed out in the return game last year, which is Damian Pierce, backup running back. He had that amazing kick return against the Cleveland Browns and had a couple other instances where – his returns were very, very good for the Houston Texans. So could somebody like Damian Pierce, could somebody like Steven Sims find their way onto the roster this time next year because of the new kick return rules? We shall see as we get closer and closer to OTAs, minicamp, and the preseason. But just something to keep an eye out for with that rule. And then another NFL rule that just came out is a ban on the hip drop tackle. This is from straight from the NFL on a hip drop tackle and what it will mean going into this next season. It is a foul if a player uses the following technique to bring a runner to the ground. A, grabs the runner with both hands or wraps the runner with both arms, and B, unweights himself by swiveling and dropping his hips and or lower body, landing on and trapping the runner's legs at, a, at or below the knee. Penalty for a hip drop tackle is a loss of 15 yards and an automatic first down and this is leaving a lot of old heads a lot of people who've watched the NFL for decades to say is the NFL getting soft are they a little soft are is this another way to give the offense an advantage because the offense we already know has a ton of advantages going back from the 70s 80s 90s 2000s to now it's a whole different game the game is entirely changing we see that with the kickoff rules as well so my question to you maybe just a little debate down in the comments is the NFL getting soft? Do you think these rule changes are going to help players stay on the field, maybe help the, improve the safety of the game? Or do you think, hey, this is turning into kind of flag football? Because guys like J.J. Watt, the NFLPA, 
already came out and said they are not a fan of the ban of the hip drop tackle and rules of that nature because it's making it where the defenders in the National Football League, they don't have an option. They're just like, do I tackle this guy? Do I let him run for a touchdown? I don't know what I can or can't do. There's a lot of gray area when it comes to tackling now in the NFL. So is that going to make it where this league is turning into somewhat of a soft league, a powder puff league? Let me know what you think down in the comments section. I'd love to interact with some of you guys and get that discussion going on whether or not the NFL is soft. As always, go down and hit that subscribe button for more free Texans videos all year long. We're the number one Texans channel on YouTube, the fastest growing Texans channel on YouTube. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already for free Texans videos all year long.